My patients are wonderful, but sometimes they steal your heart. Meet Clarence. Clarence is a 12-year-old male neutered Yorkshire Terrier with bladder stones. His owner also has a kind heart. He wants us to remove Clarence's stones non-surgically. But here's my dilemma. Clarence is small and his urethral opening is narrow. He has lots of stones and the diameter of my scope is 8.5 French. So I asked his primary veterinarian if he could pass an 8 French catheter easily beyond the os penis. I was given an affirmative answer of yes. But when I started the procedure, passing the scope was difficult. I didn't want to give up on Clarence or his owner. I knew that passing the scope multiple times could cause the urethra to swell, making it difficult for us to get in. I had to develop a strategy, and quickly, and this is what I came up with. Number one, on the first pass of the scope, I'm going to break up all the stones into very small fragments. So if I can't get the scope back in, I'll at least be able to void all the fragments out. Number two, I'm going to be very efficient with my fragmentation. In order to do that, I need to turn the power down on my laser and really take my time and focus on the stones. The third thing I'm going to do is clear the bladder of small debris through the biopsy channel of the scope so I don't have to remove it. I was very fortunate. Breaking up the stones at the lower power prevented them from ricocheting away from the laser and actually speeded up the fragmentation process. I was able to reinsert the scope several times. Once I basketed out the larger stones, we did voiding uroheteropulsion twice to remove these fragments and got all of the fragments out. You can hear stones falling out, but I don't know how many fell out. There you go. That was a wonderful stream, guys. It wasn't. Yeah, it yep, wasn't I that. Heard that. And stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's put them back down. Here's a picture of the stones we removed by voiding uroheteropulsion. We reinserted the scope, and you can see that all the stones are removed. The debris is coagulated protein. The dog was then taken to radiography, where survey radiographs were unremarkable, and a double contrast confirmed complete removal of the stones. The stones were submitted for quantitative mineral analysis and were composed of 100% calcium oxalate. Clarence's recovery from anesthesia was uneventful. He went home that afternoon on two days of an antibiotic and two days of pain medication. The procedure took longer than usual, but I knew that his owner would appreciate the extra effort and gentle approach we took with Clarence. Our clients deserve our best efforts to be as thoughtful and compassionate as possible and avoid surgery when non-surgical techniques are feasible. Thank you for spending time with me to improve the care you provide to your patients. You can reach us at urolithcenter.org where you can find information on procedures to manage stones and other urinary tract disorders.